Dr. Janine Kraft here, and I am going to talk about what are probiotics good for today. It's a common question I get from a lot of my patients, so I'm going to break it down for you. The big deal with probiotics is that they help us to break down the food that we consume. And in particular, they also help us to be able to unlock the nutrients from the food that we consume. All too often in my office, I'm seeing that people are deficient in vitamin B12, in vitamin D, and also a lot of their minerals such as calcium, selenium, and magnesium in particular. In fact, magnesium is one of the most deficient minerals in all of the folks that I see. And so where do we get it from? Well, we're breaking it down. Those probiotics break down all of our minerals, B vitamins, vitamin A and D, and allow us to be able to utilize those nutrients. And so if we do not have sufficient amounts of beneficial bacteria, we don't get those nutrients. And so we might be eating as healthy as we possibly can, but if we are deficient in the sufficient amount of probiotics or beneficial bacteria, we are not getting any of those good minerals and vitamins from our food. And so we have to supplement. And that's unfortunate because definitely you're spending the money on the food. You might as well get something out of it. Probiotics also help us to produce something called short chain fatty acids. These are what we use for energy, for cellular energy. And what's quite cool about short chain fatty acids is that they also help with signaling to tell us if we're full or if we're not. And so, you know, if you're constantly walking around going, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I just can't get full, it could be because you are lacking on the beneficial bacteria that help you to create short chain fatty acids. And so that's one reason that it's not necessarily your fault that you're always hungry. And this willpower or thing could be a fundamental issue that's happening in your belly and has nothing to do with your primary brain, because I always call the belly the second brain. And so the short chain fatty acids are a key component here. Along the same lines with the short chain fatty acids in the production of energy for our body, we also have this connection between the gut and the brain axis. This concept is the connection between the nervous system, the endocrine system, and our immune system. And it's a complicated, intertwined system of communication that we're only beginning to differentiate and figure out. And at this point, it's quite cool in terms of how our gut really is our second brain and how a lot of what goes on in terms of what types of beneficial bacteria you have in your gut have everything to do with your body size, with your communication skills, with your ability to be able to think clearly. A lot of patients come into my office and say, I'm just so brain fogged. My brain isn't working. My brain's broken. And a lot of times there's nothing wrong up here. It's all in the gut. And so oftentimes this is where I tell folks it's really important to consider doing some stool testing. Why? Because that's going to tell us what type of bacteria you have in your gut and what we need to work on replacing. The other side of this is looking into, okay, how many different types of environmental toxins are you being exposed to during the day? Looking at your job, looking at all of the different home care products you use and working on getting everything switched over to non-toxic items. The other side of this is how many medications are you on? Medications will reap havoc with your gut flora. Also, how much stress are you under? Stress has a huge component, and it's, it's a huge component of causing trouble with what's going on with the balance in your digestive system flora. We are taking off a lot of the beneficial soil bacteria. Now, granted, the other side of this is, is that our soil is probably quite toxic, especially where I live here in Washington State, near Tacoma. The, our soil is really damaged. Where I used to live in Colorado, lots of damage because of all the mining and things of that nature. And so you've got to be careful, of course, in terms of your environment and what you're growing your foods in. But you know what? Just bypass it. Go and take some soil-based bacteria. So you've got that. Now, the other thing is the spore-based probiotics. I love those as well. Why? They're kind of like the babies to the probiotics and they last longer through the digestive system and then they just release and start, you know, they're kind of like a little seed and then they start their neighborhoods and families. And so I like to have people rotating through all of those. Then after you get a little bit established with your portfolio there, then you can start to eat the fermented foods, the sauerkraut and all of those things. Because for a lot of people, if you just hit that hard and start that out, you're going to have a 
ton more gas and bloating and digestive upset. And so today, my big thing that I wanted to express to everybody is that probiotics are absolutely useful to help you to break down your food, but also they're useful for you to be able to get key vitamins and nutrients in your diet, and they help with your brain function. And who doesn't want a sharper brain? My goodness, I want to be sharp up until 115. And so if you are looking for all of that, then you need to make sure you get on your probiotics, start slow, ramp up, watch some of my other videos that give you tips on how to ramp up on the probiotics. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Janine Krauss.